Roman Republic and Empire, 500 BCE to 476 CE. Overview. By the end of this presentation, you should be able to understand and answer these questions for each of the major topics. Roman history, what is the timeline? Art and architecture, what was the influence of the Greeks? Poetry and philosophy, who were the major writers? Religion, what religions were practiced in the Roman Empire? The drama of Roman history. The city was founded in 753 BCE, according to the legend of Romulus and Remus, by Latin, Etruscan, Greek, and Phoenician people. It was ruled by Etruscan kings until the Latins overthrew them in 509 BCE. This was the beginning of the Roman Republic, a government of representatives chosen to act for the people at large. Romans first conquered the Italian peninsula. Early conflict included a struggle between patricians, landowners, and plebeians, the working class. You may recognize some of the legendary Etruscan kings from the time before the Republic. Their stories are told in the Iliad and the Odyssey. After conquering Italy, the Romans took over the Mediterranean in the Punic Wars. In 146 BCE, the Romans conquered Corinth in Greece and absorbed the entire Hellenistic world and culture. Julius Caesar, 100 to 44 BCE, conquered Gaul, France, and had himself named dictator for life in 46 BCE. He was assassinated in 44 BCE. Octavian, 63 BCE to 14, defeated Mark Antony in 31 BCE. He renamed himself Augustus and his reign marked the beginning of almost 200 years of peace, known as the Pax Romana from 30 BCE to 100 Common Era and the start of the Roman Empire. The Roman Empire stretched across Europe, the Mediterranean, the Mideast, and the north coast of Africa. See if you can order some major events in Roman history on the timeline. The city of Rome was founded in 753 BCE, followed by the Roman Republic in 509 to 27 BCE. After Augustus became emperor in 27 BCE, the Roman Empire was founded until it fell in 476. Imperial Rome. Romans were considered rude farmers compared to the culture's Athenians. Culture began under Octavian, Caesar Augustus, and his Pax Romana. I found Rome a city of bricks and left it a city of marble. Virgil wrote the national epic, the Enneid, about the Roman her hero, Aeneas. Overall, the Romans took over the Greek cities and absorbed the Greek culture. A key concept in this unit is that Roman culture imitated the Greeks. As you learn about their culture, notice the artistic and cultural contributions that were uniquely Roman. The art of the Roman Empire. The Romans were excellent architects and engineers, building bridges, aqueducts, and the roads needed to expand the empire. They built statues and buildings that were political advertisements for the empire, propaganda. Notice the likeness of Augustus on the right to the Greek sculpture by Polycletus. The Ara Passus Augustus was built to commemorate Augustus's safe return from Gaul. Trajan's Forum was the marketplace, social, and political center. The 650-foot narrative spiraling up the column of Trajan commemorates Emperor Trajan's victories over the Dacians. Here's a closer look at the column. Compare the details to the frieze on the Parthenon at the top. The Temple of Portunus built in the first century BCE is a very well-preserved temple dedicated to the god Portunus, the god of livestock, keys, and harbors. Compare the style to the Greek Parthenon to the right. The architecture of Rome. The Romans built for practical purposes. Basilicas were wooden rectangular buildings for civic gatherings. They also built public baths and libraries. Uniquely Roman innovations were concrete, the arch, and the barrel vault. The arch was a more flexible construction than the old post and lintel structure. The keystone at the top allowed the arch to bear more weight. The innovations of barrel vaults, cross vaults, and domes allowed for more elaborate buildings. Concrete, a mixture of rubble and mortar that hardened when mixed with water, was quick and inexpensive and allowed for fast construction. 
exteriors were coated in a marble veneer. The Arch of Trajan shows two Roman innovations, the arch and concrete. The remains of the Basilica of Constantine in Rome. Roman baths were part beauty salon, library, and shopping mall. Aqueducts supplied both hot and cold water for public bathing. The Roman Colosseum could hold 50,000 spectators. Events held here included gladiator fights and other big spectacles such as mock sea battles. The Pantheon is the only building from antiquity that is entirely preserved. It's dedicated to the seven planetary gods, Mars, Venus, Mercury, Saturn, Jupiter, the sun, and the moon. It was built by Hadrian in 120 Common Era. Its interior is a perfect hemisphere. On the ceiling is a 30-foot opening, an oculus for light. Much of what we know about Roman daily life and household decoration came from the discovery of the ruins of Pompeii in the 18th century. The city was destroyed on August 24, 79, by the eruption of Mount Vesuvius. The ruins, much of them preserved intact, offered a glimpse of Roman household and decoration, including atriums, wall paintings, mosaic, death masks, and realistic renditions of busts to commemorate family members. The ruins of Pompeii uncovered a snapshot of Roman daily life, including wall art, such as this double portrait of a couple. Since Pompeii was a coastal town and probably a tourist location with an entertainment district, excavation revealed some buildings with erotic art. Detailed mosaics were found on the floors. This trompe l'oeil fresco found at Pompeii is meant to trick the eye into seeing three dimensions in a two-dimensional work of art. Here is a 20th century trompe l'oeil to compare. Roman theater and music. The Romans believed that entertainment was, was a birthright. Much of their plays were comedies and tragedies borrowed from the Greeks. Roman playwrights include Plautus, a comic playwright who wrote farces and used coarse humor, Terence, whose plays included fully developed characters, and Seneca, a tragic writer who used exaggerated plots. Romans preferred bear fighting and gladiator fights rather than serious plays. Their drama included pantomime, farce, improbable situations, exaggeration, and horseplay. Plays were often obscene spectacles. Theaters were large structures with multi-storied stages and up to 60,000 spectators. Actors wore masks and wigs, and men still played all the roles. Acting was not a respected profession, and many actors were slaves. Roman music imitated Greek music and instruments. Orators had musicians play for effect while they were giving speeches. Instruments include aulus, which are flutes, Cythera, 12 stringed lyre, horn or cornu shaped in a C, and water organ or hydraulis. Roman poets. Two well known Roman poets were Catullus and Ovid. Catullus was a lyric poet who studied Sappho and wrote love poems. Ovid, who wrote Metamorphoses, was a source for many other European writers such as Chaucer and Shakespeare. The epic poet Virgil wrote the Ennead around 29 to 19 BCE. The Ennead celebrated traditional Roman values and was propaganda for Augustus's Roman imperialism. It is a story of Aeneas and his adventures in the Trojan War. In the story of Dido and Aeneas, Queen Dido of Carthage fell in love with Aeneas after his landing in Africa, and Virgil attributes her suicide to her abandonment by him at the command of Jupiter. Her dying curse on the Trojans provides a mythical origin for the Punic Wars between Rome and Carthage. The Romans also wrote satire, an artistic form that wittily ridicules human volley or vice. Two satirists are Horace and Juvenal. In Horace's Odes, he made famous the, the phrase, seize the present, or in his native Latin, carpe diem. In Juvenal Satire 6, he makes fun of marriage, asking his friend who is about to get married if he is sane and recommends different methods of suicide as preferable to having a wife. Roman philosophy. Lucretius continued the philosophical ideas of Epicurus. He wrote that good is moderate and lasting pleasure and that one should choose pleasure over pain when possible. An extreme form of Epicureanism is hedonism. 
Hedonists always choose pleasure over pain. Stoics were virtuous and dutiful. Their obligation was to duty and world order. Divine reason controlled the universe. Happiness was in social duty. Marcus Aurealis wrote the Stoic text, Meditation. Aurealis wrote, a man should be upright, but not be kept upright. A noble man compares and estimates himself by an idea which is higher than himself, and a mean man by one lower than himself. The one produces aspiration, the other ambition, which is the way in which a vulgar man aspires. Be content with what you are and wish not change, nor dread your last day, nor long for it. Very little is needed to make a happy life. It is all within yourself in your way of thinking. Waste no more time arguing about what a good man should be, be one. Religions in Roman Empire. At the time of the birth of Jesus, around 4 BCE to about 1 CE, these religions were practiced in the Roman Empire. A belief in a pantheon of Roman gods, Jupiter, and many major and minor gods and goddesses. Buddhism, which spread from the East. Judaism in the province of Judea. Mithraism spreads in the first century and Christianity evolved in the first and third centuries. Rome's division and decline. The emperor Diocletian in the third century believed the empire had grown unwieldy. He divided the empire into East and West around 286. In the third century, Emperor Constantine moved the capital to the east in Constantinople, now Istanbul, Turkey. The Roman Empire finally falls to invading tribes from the north and east in 476. The power vacuum is quickly filled by the newly powerful and growing Catholic Church. For the next thousand years, religion will dominate the arts, culture, and government of the former Roman Empire.